It is almost showtime, and we're getting ready to spool up the show. Looks like it's about three minutes to five, about three minutes to five here on the east coast of the United States, the east coast of the United States, and got the focus point on the Grand Seiko at the top. And because of the angle of the camera, the GMT is a little bit out of focus, and the bottom is a little bit out of focus, but it is what it is, folks. So we are live and a couple minutes early, better than being late. We were late yesterday. And I don't like that, but we had audio issues. We had all kinds of issues. Our issues had issues yesterday, but we did get the show off. Oh, I've got the I've got the funny voice again. Now I've got the funny voice, um, the helium voice. I don't know what causes that, folks. It's something on the channel. Can anybody Google what causes the Donald Duck voice, and let me know? Because I have no idea. Some, this is like the second or third time this has happened. And I didn't do anything different. What could be causing it? It can't be a setting on the Video Pro. Maybe I'm going to reboot just for kicks. I'm going to reboot the Video Pro and start the broadcast again. And let's see if that uh, changes anything. Okay. It says that we are live and... I don't know if that will fix the problem because I don't know what the problem is. So that's <laughs> the chipmunk voice. <laughs> that's freaking great. <laughs> might be a feature. It might be a feature. Okay, so the chipmunk voice just went away. Sorry about that, folks. I, I you know, I actually I do kind of like the chipmunk voice now that I think about it, but I don't know how to do it on purpose. Maybe somebody can tell me how to do it on purpose, and then, and then we'll all know. You really sound weird. Um, that's much better, said, says Thomas in the house. So we've got an interesting show today because, as you guys know, some of these Rolex gurus, some of these experts, some of these trusted authorities have actually gone out and purchased Grand Seikos. Some of these diehard Rolex people have gone out and purchased Grand Seikos, it would appear. I don't know that they actually bought them. I wasn't there for the transaction, so I don't know. But it would appear that that has happened. And Bark and Jack, who I actually have some respect for, Adrian, uh, he purchased the uh, Stunner, the, um, the 005 GMT, and he's actually reported very favorably on it. Uh, he seems to be pretty impressed. Let me know in the chat what you guys think about that. Um, the dog man, Mark Goldberg, who I have a little bit less respect for, for several reasons, first of which he allows a lot of really nasty comments, uh, libelous comments in, in his chat on his channel. Uh, I wonder if I could take legal action against him for him allowing those, because I know who he is. I don't know how a lot of these other folks, you can't find them because they're, you know, these fake identities and everything. You know, they're, they're trolls, and they're in their mom's basement. They don't have any assets to go after anyway. But Mark allows a lot of that stuff in, in his chat, uh, things that he must know are totally untrue. But in any event, so he has purchased a diver, a uh, stainless steel diver, similar to this watch but the stainless steel watch and he gave kind of a mixed review when he did the unboxing and <laughs> it's funny he didn't even know to lift the rice paper somebody made a comment in there about it he didn't even know the reason the rice paper is like that is you just grab it and you just gently lift the box right out I mean it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know this and then of course he puts in one of his comments that that I don't have any, how did, he, how did he put it? I don't have any authority or, what, let's see, let's see what he said. I gotta I got, I got quote this guy exactly because we talk about a clueless guy. Okay, let me stop that from playing because we don't want to hear all that. But let me see here, where is it? Um, here it is. So he actually pinned my comment to the top. Okay, he actually pinned my comment to the top. And, um, I told him that he should step up to the titanium, that he should, I bought the titanium watch to really, you know, get the, 
the full benefit of the Grand Seiko experience because this thing is awesome on wrist, as you guys all know. So I told him he should have bought that. And then he says, titanium is for weak sisters. Steel is for real men. Okay, and, and then I said, it's amazing on wrist to really step up from the sub, you need the 231. You know, if you want a big step up, right? And, and this is what's funny. This, this is the funny part. So he responds, Chip, your problem is you're a know-it-all without the proper credentials. And I'll have the last word, but thanks for being a fan of my channel. <laughs> Here's a guy that just got into watches, doesn't have a clue about watches and about wearing them for decades, doesn't have a clue when it comes to wearing a Rolex for decades, doesn't have a clue when it comes to wearing a Date 8 for decades, doesn't have a clue when it comes to buying several day dates brand new and wearing them for decades. It doesn't have a clue when it comes to wearing steel Rolexes for decades. Okay, this youngster doesn't have a freaking clue and he's talking about my credentials? Somebody who was a professional appraiser for many years? Somebody who knows how to discern quality? Somebody who examined and appraised classic cars? For insurance purposes and for other purposes, for pre-purchase, for pre-sale. Somebody whose job it was to determine quality and condition and all these kinds of things for many, many years. Somebody who buys quality items and uses them in the field. Somebody who doesn't buy watches and put them away in some box somewhere. I don't have any credentials. Interesting. But he went and he bought a Grand Seiko. But he doesn't have a clue what he has. He has no clue. Nice guy, I'm sure. Probably not, though. He's got issues. But anyway, it's interesting that he bought one. And, and I think it's an interesting topic for, for discussion. So um, let's see what's in the chat here. <laughs> okay, normal voice, normal voice. And... Uh, now you really saying, well, that's much better. Okay, the Rolex boys are hacking the channel. All good, Craig. Um, well, we got the wrench gangs in the house. They'll take care of the grinders. Watch, Doctor. Uh, Mark Goldberg bought a Grand Seiko. Says it's inferior to Rolex, but still likes the Chunky Diver, his words. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a clue what's inferior or superior or whatever. I mean, he, he wouldn't have a clue. Um just by the fact that he didn't even know to pull the rice paper up to lift it out of he shows he's pretty clueless and I've seen a few of his videos and I mean he finally bought a lav mic to have halfway decent audio of course I shouldn't be the one talking about audio my audio was a train wreck in yesterday's show found out what happened by the way we had the um, I turned on the uh, phantom power on all three channels of this uh, shore let me put of the uh, the audio uh, mixer there, field mixer, turned on the uh, the phantom power on all three channels because two of the lav mics we had running into it needed phantom. So I said, oh, what the heck, I'll just turn it on on all three channels. Because normally these dynamic mics, like these shore dynamic mics, phantom power doesn't bother them one bit. Doesn't blow them out, doesn't do anything, doesn't mess up your audio. And any of my other mixers, my sound devices, device, I could have the phantom power and it doesn't matter, it still works. For some reason, with this setup, it just killed this mic. This mic was totally dead in yesterday's show. The only reason people were hearing me at all was the two lav mics were picking me up. And so, and of course, our wags came in late, and he noticed it immediately. The other members of the wrench gang, by the way, guys, you guys get an F. You didn't catch it. You didn't catch that my mic was dead the whole time, folks. You're supposed to let me know these things. But anyway... Anyway, let's let's go um, let's go back to the comments. We've got some grinders in here. Um, let's see, uh, a good choice to buy a GS OP uh, Oyster Perpetual greater than GS Oyster Perpetual is a great watch. You're not going to say any, get me to say anything negative about an Oyster Perpetual. That is a great watch. Please don't sue me. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I might start taking some legal action on some of these things if it gets to be where I can get some nice cash. If people have deep pockets, I'm not going to go after people, you know, blood out, blood out of a turnip doesn't work. You know, you don't get any money. But if somebody uh, with some assets uh, says something, um, yeah, I might, uh, I might take away some of their assets because it would be a slam dunk. I mean, you know, there's no evidence at all to support any of the things that they've been saying. Um, so, yeah, it would be it's straight up libel when you write that stuff down, folks. I hate to hate to break the news to you guys. Uh, but anyway, we won't we won't dwell on that. I spoke to Adrian the other day. He loves the GS. Andrew in the house. Yeah, he's been saying some really positive things about the GS. And I'll tell you, this 231, I have to say, is actually more comfortable on my wrist than the 005. The 005 is close second. It's very comfortable on wrist as well. But this one, especially in the hot weather, we talked about it the other day. There's something about that titanium it just is super, super comfortable. James is in the house. Get him, Craig. Uh, let's see here. Um, prospects are nudging in front of Rolex and GS are light years ahead. Versage is in the front of Omega. Well, there we go. We've got a horse race going on there. Uh, do you know if it's the real Mark Goldberg? There's a fake Mark Goldberg out there. I would just confirm. Watch that. No, I'm on his channel. I was just showing you this is on his channel. That's that's the comments on the video that he put up about the uh, Grand Seiko unboxing. So, yeah, it's right on there. Um, let's see here. Macro photography proving Seiko, Seikos are better. There you go. Mar Mark also keeps most of his watches in a safety deposit box. He keeps safe queens. Well, he thinks they're investments. He's one of these guys that bought high and thinks he's going to be able to sell higher. Um, good luck with all that working out. I think these are going to be a comeuppance for a lot of these folks when the market adjusts. I'm not going to say crash. It's not going to crash to zero. But when we see about a 40% adjustment in, in uh, steel, steel um, Rolexes, we're going to see a, a lot of people in a little bit of a state of panic. Let's see here. I, I like your videos, but I never get to sleep in time because they're always late. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. We're going to be coming out with some videos at different time frames for people in different parts of the world. Watch doctors in the house. I love the GS dials. I would put it on the level of JLC, great value for the money. They punch higher than their weight class. Lange, Patek, uh, AP, VC, uh, are all on their level. Yeah, I, I think they're at a very high level. And and I think that <clears throat> I would really compare it to a Lexus. And we talked about the Lexus LS sedan from an LS 400 to a LS 430 to an LS 460. The newest ones, I'm not a big fan of the body style, but they're still fantastic cars. This is sort of like that. It's just a really good, solid watch that is just and a joy to wear and use and, and trouble-free and just like that big Lexus sedan. The Rolex of sedans would probably be the 7 Series BMW, which, you know, fancy and all that, and, and but um, not as good a vehicle. And it's got the name, right? Rolex has the name. Mercedes has the name, right? Lexus doesn't really have that name. It's It's really... Even though it's a separate name from Toyota, people still think of it as a Toyota. They, they don't put it in the same class as a 7 Series BMW or an S-Class Mercedes. But I would make a, I think I can make a legitimate argument that the LS, the Lexus LS sedan, is, is a better vehicle in a lot of ways. So, um, and I think the gap between Rolex and Grand Seiko is even a bigger gap than the gap between the Lexus sedan and the 7 Series BMW. So that's that's what I think about all that. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm a I'm a turnip. Okay, whatever that means. Craig, why titanium is better than steel and GS? This thing I I can't really I can't really tell you all the reasons. I can just say that it's just so comfortable on wrist. Sure, it's lighter weight, but it's not just the weight. 
Somebody said in the chat the other day that the the friction, the co the coefficient of friction is much lower on these, so it's it, it's less friction against your skin. The thermal properties are are unique and better. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to this particular titanium that Grand Seiko uses. Now, don't compare this to the cheaper grade one or grade two titanium that a lot of the gray-looking watches have. This watch, when you put it right next to a stainless steel version, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. They, they look very similar. But there's just something about this that is so comfortable on wrist. And I do like the little gold. The GS and the Grand Seiko are in gold on this one, whereas on the stainless steel one, they're white, like on this one. So I do like that little touch as well. But it's mainly the comfort on wrist. And of course, I buy these watches to wear and use. If you're keeping them in a box or putting them in a safe or whatever, if you're not wearing them, none of what I say applies. None of what I say applies. My channel is all about wearing and using these items and all the high-end items that I talk about. It's actually using them, wearing them. By the way, this is that Gitman Brothers shirt that a fan sent me, or subscriber, I shouldn't say fan, a subscriber uh, sent me. Um, very nice, very nice fabric. Um, and I appreciate it very much that, that he sent me this. He knew I was a fan of Gitman Brothers shirts, and he knew the size I wore because I talked about it. And so this is a 1633 that he just sent me um, as a gift because he said it didn't fit him anymore. He only wore it a couple times. So that was fantastic. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> I think 30 to 40 percent is spot on for Rolex correction. Robert V in the house. And uh, Chai Town, California, I call him Chi Town, and he's saying, uh, hey, Craig, I, I went to a Chicago Rolex AD the other day and tried on OP39, Datejust 41, and Datejust 36. Cool. I I think the OP39 is is a pretty good sweet spot, but I think the Datejust 36 is a, is a green light as well. I don't like the Datejust 41. It looks a little bit big to me. Uh, it just I'm not a fan of the... Now, of course, I'm talking about I don't like big watches, but I'll make a, an exception for a diver's watch like this. And like I say, this one doesn't wear, this is a 44 mil watch, but it really doesn't wear like that. It wears more like a 40 just because of the weight and because of the lug design and everything. It, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you guys, this is comfortable on wrist. It is on my wrist 24-7 this time of the year. I mean, it's just on my wrist all the time. Because I in, in the hot weather like this, I've always got my sleeves rolled up. I mean, so so yeah, that's on my wrist. Let's see here. The Batman prices are coming down. We've got a report from Andrew. Uh, Denmark here in the house. Um, Prospects is Lexus in your comparison, not GS. Okay. Uh, let's see here. R.J. Lane, uh, this Rolex versus GS argument is getting as heated as the Gibson versus Fender argument about guitars. But R.J. Lane, don't you think there's a bigger difference between the the Rolex and GS? I, I think there's, uh, you know, I don't even think it's a close call at this point. I think the GS is a higher quality piece. Now, GS, they make a lot of ugly watches. They make a lot of watches I would not buy. I will tell you right now that a lot of the Rolexes are are more classic, better design, like the Oyster Perpetual that we just talked about, the Date Just that we just talked about. You know, I'm not a fan of the um, super cases, those the fat lugs on the on the uh, Submariners that they have now. I'm not not a fan, so I think they screwed it up there. But a lot of their designs, the Date Eight, are fantastic designs. So they. They have an edge in that area on some models. So you got to be very selective when you buy a Grand Seiko because some of the models I just wouldn't buy. I mean, period. But fortunately, they do make some models that are pretty stunning and pretty freaking amazing, and you get all that quality and you get a great design all at the same time. But you got to be careful. You can't just buy anything they put out. Um, let's see here. I had my first SBGH267. And love the way it wears. Love the way it wears. Then my Tudor Rolex w wears comfortable. Though. Okay. Yeah. I would, yeah. I would pass on Tudor for now. Um, let's see. Everybody is sticking. 
with my Omega. Howdy, everybody. I'm sticking with my Omega, the Watch Lounge. Well, there you go. Omega makes some nice pieces. Uh, Chai Town, uh, well, I'll say the Rolex of luxury sedans would be W126 S Class from the 80s. There you go. Uh, you got that 140 with the dual pane windows, right? So think about that. Rolexes of today are still far more reliable than Mercedes. Yeah, see, that, that was probably a bad analogy on my part because Rolexes are very reliable. I was just saying more the name. They've got the name. But, yeah, an older Mercedes or an older S-Class BMW, you can't buy them cheap enough because the money you're going to have to pour into them. <laughs> Whereas if you buy an old Lexus, if it's, I'm assuming it's a well-kept, garage-kept car, like you buy a, a 10 or 15 year old Lexus LS sedan that's garage kept one or in a car in really nice shape with 100,000 miles or less on it, right? You might have to do the major servicing where they replace the timing belt and all that. But once you do that, you're good to go for another 100,000 miles with just normal oil changes and normal maintenance. I mean, they're so bulletproof reliable, it is, re it is ridiculous. People are going 300,000, 400,000 miles with those, no problem no major engine work nothing the LS 460s I understand the control arms sometimes need to be replaced at some point there's a little little Achilles heel on them but they have almost no issues can't say that about a 7 series BMW um, I just bought GS SB GA 231 and in three days it's one half second ahead I'm overwhelmed by that. Not even my Rolex can do that. Oh, no, no. The Rolex can't match the accuracy of a spring drive. But that's not a fair fight. This is regulated by a quartz oscillator. So that's not apples to apples. But I'll be interested to hear how it's doing after 30 days because I think you're going to find it's going to settle in. And you, you're going to be within a second in 30 days or so. Mine is. Uh, you you will be amazed how well that watch is going to do. And, and I'm glad that it's a little bit on the fast side. That's what you want. You don't want it running slow. That really bothers me when a watch runs slow. Uh, Chai Town, the date just 41. Still fit my wrist fine, but it was too big to be a dress watch. And it more wore, wore more like a thin sports watch with rather oversized bezel. The Datejust 36 was perfect for me. It's my goal. There, yeah, I, I agree with you. And the Datejust 36 is a perfect all-arounder. Dress, sport, anything. Uh, okay, so David says, great news, Joey. Um, watch Dr. GS trying to get into the Omega versus Rolex fight. I don't really think GS is doing much to, to, to spur this on. I, I think it's... I think it's people are just starting to learn about the Grand Seiko. It's becoming a little more prevalent here in the U.S. They've opened up some more ADs. Of course, my videos, I think, have helped. Uh, but I, I think it's just the knowledge is getting out there. It's leaking out, and people are taking notice. And um, I think they're going to start getting hard to get. I think there's going to start being waiting lists, especially this puppy, that 005. It's already getting harder to get. Uh, there are some waiting lists already on that puppy. So it and the two three one as well. By the way, this watch as well. They're starting to get to be some waiting lists on them. I find my GS compares favorably with my IWC. Nice faces. Okay, there you go. That's right. Um, the only issue with servicing an LS four hundred is the replacing the starter motor since it's buried down in the engine. How often do you have to replace that though? Isn't it pretty rugged? Uh, see the thing is Toyota and Lexus are really good at, at, at sourcing parts that just are reliable and hold up. I mean just the fact that you can buy an LS sedan that's 10 or 15 years old and all the switches and everything inside works. You know just everything just works. I mean, that, that's a nightmare when you have an older luxury car like that and all those little things start failing like what happened on a 7 Series BMW, for example. I mean, it's a nightmare, right? But with the LS, no big deal. It all just works. 
it all just works. Now, I'm not talking about a ragged out one that's had three owners, that's been sitting outside, you know, that hasn't been taken care of. Pass. I wouldn't buy one of those at any price. I would buy a one owner garage kept car. That's what I would buy. And they're out there. Uh, let's see. While I respect everyone's opinion slash taste, I'm not convinced it's a zero-sum game. I like a couple of Rolex models, Omega Aquaterra and SB300, and some GS. I love them all. And someday we'll, we'll own them. In other words, you're going to own all of them? Okay. I would pick the nicest one, the one you really like the most, and I'd buy it and wear it and enjoy it. Life's too short, folks. Wear them, man. I'm telling you. Um... I own a 2008 Lexus IS250 now. I love the car. Uh, same as my GS GMT 9F86. It's a perfect duo. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, Blue Shirt Boot is in the house. Hello, everyone. The LS400 starter motor is usually good for 100K miles. Hmm, I would have thought they'd have lasted longer than that. Okay. <clears> hmm. <throat> And I guess it depends on your use case, right? If you do a lot of highway running where you're taking longer trips and stuff like that, but if you're just like bopping around town all the time and always stopping and starting and restarting it and all that, then that's probably not good. And I wouldn't want to buy a car like that that was used for a lot of just bumping around town. You can tell when you examine one of these cars how they were used, what, what their uh, use case was like. You know, you open up the trunk and there's a bunch of scratches where, you know, like I was a real estate agent and they're always putting like their for sale, their open house arrows in the back and all. You know, you can see that kind of stuff. You, can, you have to be a detective when you examine these used cars to buy them. You have to kind of just just figure out what this car was used for, how it was used, what was the use case and and, uh, and buy accordingly. Totally agree. Japanese made really awesome and reliable products. I love the bezel and bracelet of the Rolex. Uh, love the movement of an Omega and the loom and dial of the GS. Wish they could combine to form the perfect watch. Yeah, we would love to see the perfect watch. I would love. I would be happy to design the perfect watch for Grand Seiko if they would give me the time of day, but they don't. I could tell them exactly what to build, and it would just be freaking epic. I could tell them two or three watches to make that would just be absolutely awesome. They could start with this watch right here, shave it down to 42 mils from 44, make it 12 mils thick as opposed to 14, and put an epic clasp on it. Put an epic clasp that's still very trim, very, very trim, but has four micro adjustments in it. Okay. If they just did those things right there to this watch, this could be the perfect sport slash diver watch. Okay. This watch right here, they should make it in titanium, make that exact same watch in titanium, make the hands thicker with more loom. And I don't care if they square them off at the ends, if they make them more like an Oyster Perpetual design. Make the hands thicker with more loom. You could even make the indices a little bit thicker with more loom. Okay? Wouldn't break my heart. And then, it's again, give it a clasp. Very elegant clasp with four micro adjustments. There's very few things they, they have to do to this watch, and they can that could be a really fantastic uh, GMT. It's close right now. Uh, let's see. Um, does anybody know what Mark Goldberg paid for the GS Diver 229? Because I know he doesn't pay retail. I don't know that he said. And I suspect that that was bought from some gray market or some some strange situation because the way he had that he peeled that off the dial and it, all the sticky stuff was on there and everything S something's not right about that because none of my watches that I bought brand new from ADs authorized ADs had that issue so there's something that is not according to Hoyle about that whole situation something's a little bit squirrely about that situation but from Mark I would expect no less um so, um, 
uh, don't buy a car with an auto start stop feature if you can't disable it. Those mechanisms will kill the engines over time. Well, here's something interesting. The Prius, as you guys know, or, or may, may, may or may not know, but the Prius, the engine stops and starts all the time. And what's neat is the, the motor, the electric motor or whatever, is, is what actually starts the engine. Not a starter, not a typical starter, not a typical small starter, right? It's that the big mechanism that restarts the engine each time. And it's designed to be very rugged. It's designed to do that for hundreds of thousands of miles and not have an issue. The design of the Prius is absolutely amazing. Little things like the thermos that it has in it that holds some of the hot water so that overnight, the next morning when you go out to start the car, it's not a cold start, so that that way it's more efficient, so the choke doesn't have to, you know, throw as much fuel in. Uh, it is just a lot of things that they did with that watch, uh, watch, with that car that is pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Let's see here. Um, let's go exquisite timepieces is where Mark Goldberg bought the GS and Omega S&P. Exquisite timepieces, are they an AD for uh, Grand Seiko? I think they might be. Yo, Bruce, what's up, man? A blue shirt Buddha. I believe he said he paid 6800 Well, oh, there's my... Um, it, it, no. <laughs> list price, no. The list price is less than sixty-eight hundred. That'd be ridiculous if he paid sixty-eight hundred. Um, my gosh, he could have bought a two-three-one all day long for less than that. He could have bought this model, and it lists at seventy-one hundred. So no, if he paid sixty-eight hundred, he got totally, totally, totally ripped off. Uh, and how much would you be willing to pay to have GS or Rolex or Omega create your perfect watch? How much would you be willing to pay to have them? They should pay me if I'm going to help them to design the perfect watch. <laughs> they should pay me. <laughs> That's how that should work. <laughs> I'm happy with the watches I have right now. I'm going to wear these. I mean, I'm I'm just saying that I could... I could make it better, right? That's all I'm saying. We all could do that. We all could tell them a few ways to make the watch better, uh, I think. Let's see. Um, you have a Mayo Zedong hair. I, I have very little hair left, but yeah. Uh, I think Mark got his from Florida, he said at the beginning of his video. Yeah. Yeah, exquisite timepieces. I think they're an AD. Um, got a croc strap with GS deployment, and it's very thick. Planet Ocean deployment, much more swelth. Swelth, I can't say that word very well. I hear you. I hear you. That's, that's why you got to really pay attention to all these little details, um, because the details, the devil is in the details. Um, okay. Um, so they had, they had Martin Luther's comment, um, Craig, why are you always talking crap about other men's timepieces? I don't know which timepiece he's talking about. Maybe he's talking about, there was a comment on one of the forums, um, about ugly watches. And somebody uh, came in and said something like, um, uh, one man's ugly watch is another man's, you know, you know, it's all about your taste and all this stuff, right? And, uh, yeah. I said, hey, here's the deal. Some watches are just ugly. I mean, you can like an ugly watch and you can wear an ugly watch. But just because you like and wear an ugly watch doesn't mean it's not ugly. <laughs> That's the way it is, right? If you, if you date an ugly girl, right? 
if, I mean, you can love her and, and she can be great with you and that exactly what you want. But that, that doesn't mean she's not ugly. Okay. It, it is what it is. Okay. So just don't be delusional on that sort of things, folks. If you buy a watch and it's an ugly watch, just know that it's an ugly watch. It ain't going to change the fact that it's ugly just because you bought it and you like it and you're wearing it. That's how that works. Just trying to be helpful here, folks. And folks, the good thing about all of this is nobody has to follow my advice on any of this stuff. They don't have to follow my advice. They can go out and do whatever they want. Um, it's not the starter motor that's the issue. It's that the motor isn't fully lubricated with oil at startup, and therefore that's when the greatest wear tear on the engine happens. So I read, yeah, no, not with a Prius. It's not. It's a non-issue. Um, you got to realize it's stopping and starting constantly, and there's still plenty of oil around, and it's all good. Um, the Prius lasts, I mean, it's just, it holds up extremely well because the engine is detuned because you don't, they don't have to get maximum power out of the gasoline engine because they've got that electric motor to give you that acceleration when you need it. So that it uses both at the same time. So they were able to detune the gasoline engine so it's not as stressed, right? And it gets, it's very efficient. And, and the fact that it's turned off a lot of the time is a lot less wear and tear on that engine. And so they're known to last a very long time. They're extremely durable setup. So they got it right. Toyota got it right with the Prius, I will tell you. Pretty amazing vehicle. Okay, watch lounge. Look at the Seiko uh, Gugera or whatever that is, or however you say. <laughs> some people love it, some hate it. Not my style, but I can respect it. Well, there you go. Um, are you saying my Rolex has a good personality? Um, and I don't know which Rolex you're talking about, and I don't know how a watch can have a personality, but oh well. <laughs> oh, okay, I hear what you're saying now. I understand now, yeah. So they're saying their their girlfriend has a good personality. Right? Okay. Well, there's a song about that, right? To not, not fall... To... To not, what's the, what's the song? It, it basically says, don't, don't date a beautiful woman, right? And it gives all the reasons why you don't date a beautiful woman, you know, because every other guy's looking at her and all that, right? So he's basically saying, you know, find an absolute dog <laughs> and date her, and you're not going to have all those issues. There's a song about that. Maybe somebody will put the name in the chat. Kind of a funny song. Um, have you ever explored the Seiko Brights line? B-R-I-G-H-T-Z line. I don't think so. I haven't. I had a SBDC 007. Uh, the Shogun was my really <clears throat> my first Seiko that I had for any period of time. And that watch was pretty impressive. Very impressive for the money. <clears throat> and that's what led me to end up getting this. As I said, man, if that watch is that good, how good is a Grand Seiko in titanium? Now that, the Shogun, of course, is the coated titanium with the Dia Shield coating or whatever they call it. That's actually even harder than this, even harder to scratch than this. But this is harder to scratch than, like, for example, the steel that Rolex uses, about 1.5 times harder. Um, but the Dia Shield's even harder than that. But you have problems where you can't refinish it easily so so it's, that's a problem but uh, but yeah this was a major step up from the 007 let's see I used to own 15 Rolex watches now I have four Grand Seikos and zero Rolexes the quality and craftsmanship of GS is way above Rolex hands down there's a man uh, <laughs> There's a man with some credibility, I would say, if he owned that many Rolexes and now he's gone to the, the Grand Seikos. I mean, that says a lot right there. I fear Mark Goldberg just bought a GS to badmouth it. He should just stick to Pelago's reviews. <clears throat> yeah. 
Well, he gets a lot of activity on his videos. He gets a lot of comments, a lot of views. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, I'm sure he's monetizing all of that content. So he's making a little bit of money. I would guess he's probably making 1000 a month on monetization, maybe even more. So, uh, so he's making some money as a result of all this stuff he's doing uh, at the expense of the people that he's kind of, you know, misleading, leading down the wrong path. Uh, but he probably doesn't care about that. He's just he he'll 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 keep taking the money. Uh, let's see the watch sounds. The the B chick is going to give you more attention and respect you more than the A chick. There you go. Uh, R. J. Lane, Doctor Hook. Okay. Doctor Hook. Okay. And what's the name of the song? Um. Let's see. The, the, we got a grinder in here. Um, <laughs> got, some idiot just made a uh, a, a nasty comment, and, and the wrench gang, <laughs> wham, got him right on the head. It's some punk in his mom's basement. And, um, yeah, he's down there. With, he's got the short arms, you know. He's, he's probably a troll. And um, he's down there in the basement and having a lot of trouble. He's not doing too good. Uh, and he was just given a timeout for 300 seconds. That, 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 uh, that punk was given a timeout. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what we've got here. Um... Uh, I'll go ahead and read this one. Um, you are no wristwatch authority. Your opinions are just that, opinions. Just because people have different tastes and preferences does not make them wrong. You're just, uh, uh, you know, and then he makes a derogatory comment. That's probably what, why I was hidden. So, Martin, here, let me let me straighten things out for you, Martin. Martin, you're not real bright, okay? You, don't, you can't even change your default icon to an actual icon. So that means you're not real bright or you're just an outright troll. Either way, buy an ugly watch. Don't follow my advice. You don't have to. It's a free world. You don't have to listen. You don't have to learn anything. You can go about your way and just stay in the basement and just buy an ugly watch and wear it. Actually, you probably won't even wear it. You'll probably buy an ugly watch and set it somewhere. And then maybe save up some money and buy another ugly watch and set it somewhere. Go ahead and do it. I'm not... I, yeah, hey... Go for it, man. We try to be positive and, and, and do the right thing here. We try to buy watches that are stunning and that get the job done, right? That's what we do, and we wear them, and we enjoy them, and we get out and we make positive things happen. That's what we do on this channel. So you can go to one of the other channels. The trolls are, are a dime a dozen, and they're over there, and they're having fun. So go on over. Mark's channel, he... He welcomes them. I put a link in the in the description on this video. There's a link. Click on through. Go on over there and hang out over there. That's how that works. Um, let's see here. Let's reload this. Make sure that we got everything. Yeah, make sure we got everything uh, up to date here. <laughs> Martin Luther Bowser. B U W S U R. Whatever the heck that is. <laughs> kind of a name is that <laughs> how these trolls come up with these names I'll never know let's see here recorder to six and uh, let me just check one thing here real quick hey put any um, persona non grata <laughs> some guy came up with a name persona non grata <laughs> What an idiot. <laughs> Where do these people come from? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, let me just check something here. Oh, Sergeant Push-Up sent me a message. He's out there doing things. Stay dry out here and have a great day. Okay, well, there you go. Sergeant Push-Up, he was in the house here. Uh, let's see... Um, okay. 
to answer that. Okay, let's say R.J. Lane in the house. Craig, you and Mark need to go for a sweet potato and work this out. <laughs> we don't have to work anything out. Uh, Mark, he, here's the thing. Mark could give a rat's rear end about my channel, and I kind of could care about his channel. So, I mean, we don't really care. I mean, it is what it is. He does what he does. He obviously embraces the trolls. I don't. We don't on this channel. So I think it's good that people have a choice. I think that people have a channel they can come to that's a troll-free zone and that, you know, the jerks get blocked and timed out and so on. Or they can go to a channel like Mark's that is full of trolls. Or, of course, Archie's, which is a troll haven. I mean, they got several places they can go. I, I think the trolls are still um, welcome on um, the Clivester's channel. So they got a whole bunch of channels they can go to and, and hang out and do their thing. They're just not welcome here. So that, that's how that all works. Um, let's see. Haha, <laughs> good one. Um, trolls are everywhere, LOL, even the smaller channels, the Watch Lounge. Well, most channels, they're welcome. Yeah, most channels, they're welcome. Here they get blocked. I mean, they come in here, but they get blocked, and so... That's how that works. But um, I will, uh, you know, we'll keep doing shows from time to time. I asked Steve if he could do a show today, and he's he's swamped. He's selling too many watches. <laughs> so he couldn't do a show. So I figured I would do the show and talk about these Grand Seikos, talk about these Rolex people that are buying Grand Seikos. And by the way, a lot of people, when I started comparing when I started talking about the Grand Seiko and comparing it to Rolex and talking about my journey from 40 years of wearing Rolexes to now wearing Grand Seikos, everybody was saying, well, you can't compare the two. You can't compare Rolex with Grand Seiko, right? So they were all saying that, right? Now, some of these Rolex people are starting to compare. And not only that, they're starting to actually buy Grand Seikos. And some of them are not admitting it, but they're doing it. And then some of them are admitting it. Um, so that's that's how that's working. So it's amazing how how times change, right? So um, let's see what <laughs> persona non grata was hidden. Um, maybe maybe David, maybe you can't block. Can you guys with the wrenches? Do you have the authority to block somebody, or do you just have a... Let me know in the chat what options you have when you click on one of these comments, because I'd be interested to know. Because I can straight up block them. If I click on it... Um, let's see here. Uh, well, I guess i got to go up here. Yeah, I can... I can put them in a timeout, or I can hide the user. Okay, so let me know if you guys have that option. Mark should have bought from Steve. At least then he would have had a clean watch and instructions on the rice paper. <laughs> well, see, most people don't need instructions on the rice paper. It's pretty obvious the way it's set up. You know, you just unfold it. You just hold it and just lift the box right out. I mean, it couldn't be any more obvious. And he's sitting here, you know. <laughs> the guy's just not real bright. I mean, you know, he's just, God bless him, you know. I mean, he works hard, I'm sure. He's built a business and all that. Um, but, you know, not the sharpest tool in the shed, especially if he can't see the difference between the quality of a Grand Seiko. And he's talking about the, the, the um, ratchet on this. I mean, it's silky smooth. It's fantastic. I mean, he can't tell that. Very strange. Very strange. Um, Blue Shirt Buddha, no. Can't block. Hide, same as block. Put in timeout, same as you. Um, you see... No, I have a hide user on channel. Okay, so I'm sorry. So it's hide. So do you guys have that option to hide them? I guess that's what it, the term is. Um, 
Eric says, uh, Hi, Craig. I bought my first Rolex and Air King a few weeks ago and love it. I'm already setting my sights on another Rolex, but I can't keep my eye off a Grand Seiko. I'm looking at a Snowflake. Well, there you go. Well, if you try one on, you're going to be amazed. The Snowflake is super comfortable on wrist. The only reason I sold mine, really, there's a couple of reasons, but the main reason is it's a little bit big. It's 41 mils. It's a little bit on the thick side for a dress watch now. Uh, it doesn't have micro adjustments. So the, the, those those three things led me to, to selling it. Free, free speech is a double-sided sword. Uh, yeah, but here's the thing. When you step over the line and you make libelous comments, okay, that's against the law. All right, there's some states where it's a criminal offense. Uh, other jurisdictions, depending on what you do, it's a civil problem where you can be sued and, and money damages uh, can be uh, awarded. So, um, so yeah, you got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you type down. As soon as you type it down in writing, that's libel, and you could have a big problem on your hands. That is if you have any assets. Now, if you're broke and you're in your mom's basement, you're fine. Nobody's going to go after you because you can't get blood out of a turnip. And most of these guys are broke and in their mom's basement, so they're not a target. Um, I hate how it's bigger than 40 millimeter. Yeah, see, this one is a perfect size, this GMT. It's 39 mils only 12 mils thick but some people don't like the fact that it's the 9F quartz but the 9F is is a fantastic movement so um, yeah like I say I could design the perfect watch for these folks um, you know some of the Rolexes have gotten thicker over the years the, the, the latest Submariners are a little bit thicker than if you go all the way back to like the red sub back in the day they were thinner right so that's a problem. Um, Blue Shirt Buddha says, uh, sorry, can't remove. OK. Yes, that's my only reservation. Is there an alternative? OK. And they do make a couple models that are in the 39 mil range, uh, Grand Seiko. So uh, you don't have to go up to the 41 mil Snowflake. Yeah, lost respect for Mark when saying he was putting off re-roofing his house in lieu of not wanting to sell off a Rolex. You should have a year's salary saved. Oh, there goes my Siri popped up on the damn thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. You should have a year's salary saved if you're buying a Rolex, my opinion. Well, also, you shouldn't buy a Rolex if you can't even afford to maintain your house. Yeah, that's... A Rolex is a luxury item. Uh, you know, you should have all your other ducks in a row. You should have plenty of money set aside for emergency fund. You should have plenty of money set aside as a nest egg. You should have investments, diversified investments, you know, in real estate, stocks, not, not nice portfolio. You should have all those things before you start buying luxury items. Now, the exception to that is if you're, if you're actually using the item as a tool and you're using it to actually make money, it's actually helping you make money. In the early days when I bought my first Date 8, I was selling high-end luxury cars. I was well-dressed. I was wearing a Date 8 and all that. I got respect from people coming in there, and I'm, I'm convinced that it helped me in my career. And so it was part of my, my uniform, if you will, okay? Um, and, and we all dressed nice. We all wore Rolexes. I mean, that's what we did. And so that's a different thing. But if you're buying a watch and setting it aside somewhere, it's, a, it's your third or fourth watch or something, and you're not even wearing it, you're not getting any real value out of it, I mean, that, that's a straight-up luxury which you, know, you, you shouldn't buy that until you have plenty of money set aside and you can afford to do things like that. 
in my opinion. And again, nobody has to listen. That's what's really wonderful is nobody has to listen. Uh, best watch for $2,000. Is that what you're asking? I would say you could get a real nice Grand Seiko for that used. You could buy a nice date just in that range, 2000 to 2500 You could get a nice date just, an older one. Uh, let's see. Rolex Hater is in the, in the chat. Why can't people just use their real names? Why don't people just use their real names? Oh, well. Uh, don't, don't, don't defer the necessities in order to have the luxuries. That's all I will say. I hear you. Maybe the Tudor Black Bay non-diver. Okay, yeah, I would pass on a Tudor. Um, GS is slowly being recognized as the better watch at a lower price point and can compete with Patek and AP in terms of finishing. I used to own both. Okay, what do you own now? I'm curious. Uh, okay, I, w I wanted an Archie live... I watched an Archie live stream the other day. He was complimenting you on your channel. What do you make of his comment? If it doesn't hurt, it's not worth it. If it doesn't hurt, it's not worth it. Oh, you mean if you're buying a watch and it's painful because you're spending a lot of money? Well, anytime you spend a lot of money, it should be a pain point. You should realize that you're spending a lot of money. Because we've talked about this on the channel. When you spend, let's say you spend $10,000 for a watch, again, that $10,000 should double in seven years. So in seven years, it should be $20,000 if it was invested properly. So not, you're not spending $10,000 on the watch. You're spending $20,000. And then seven years later, $40,000. So there should be pain when you buy a luxury item. You should realize what you're doing to your financial situation when you buy something like that. Um, and a lot of people don't run that math. They don't do the math. Um, uh, let's see, buying a watch, yeah, okay. So we'll go, we'll go for a few more minutes. Put any comments or questions or whatever you have in there. Uh, because we're going to wrap up pretty soon. Buying a watch, yeah, let's see. Um, I'm the guy that used to own 15 Rolex watches and now four Grand Seikos, okay. Uh, uh, did you see the TGV watch box interview? Yes, I did. I did watch that. Um, and it was interesting. It was interesting. Those guys, the Goffberg folks or whatever, I mean, they've got deep pockets and they're doing whatever they can to dominate the market and to sell a bunch of watches. And obviously, uh, you know, they're going to do whatever they can do to reach all the eyeballs out there that are watching YouTube and watching these videos and, and so forth. And they're going to gobble up people like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they've talked to Archie, but maybe they've stayed away from Archie's channel just because there's so much foul stuff going on there that they've, they've stayed away. But um, I'm surprised that, that uh, well, I guess I'm not surprised because maybe they looked like, I, I, I told Steve he should, he should uh, sponsor Archie, but he went and watched a couple of his videos and he said, no, I'd never sponsor him. So... Um, We've talked about that before. If Archie cleaned up his channel as far as the vulgarity and as far as the trolls and all that, he could probably get some, some major corporate sponsors because he, he is good at what he does. He's got, he has a lot of influence. He's got knowledge about the products. Uh, he should be rolling in money is my, my, uh, uh, my opinion. He should be rolling in money. Uh, let's see. It sounds like you must have got a divorce. <laughs> oh, uh, that was terrible. Uh, TGV looked bad. I don't like that haircut he got. What, what's with that haircut? Like, uh, you know, hipster type stuff. They're trying to do the hipster type stuff. Um, 
And I don't understand with the money that Govberg has, why they've got those cheap mics. I've got a couple of those those mics, those mics they use, those desk mics. Those are like 40 or $50 mics. Um, they're not that great. Why don't they get some better audio in there uh, with the budget that they've got? They could have a couple of Sennheiser shotgun mics pointed at each person. They could be even out of frame. They don't have to be in frame like this is. They could get a couple of those $1,000 Sennheiser shotgun mics and really up their game, their production quality. They do shows all the time, so, I mean, my gosh, the money they're throwing around, what's what's $2,000 for two of those mics? That would be epic. Um, let's see here. It's... It's got to hurt to be worth buying isn't necessarily a bad idea. It should force you to reevaluate how much you should be spending on a watch and whether it's the right timepiece for you. Absolutely. I'm spending on anything, not just a watch. When you spend money, you're taking away your, your ability to earn with that same money, to invest that money and to earn with that same money. Um, let's see here. Which four GSs do you have if you wanted to share? Okay. Yes, I divorced Rolex. Um, enjoyed the chat. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Archie made over $600 in Super Chats on Saturday. Well, there you go. That's good. Um, <clears throat> I wonder how much of a cut uh, YouTube takes of that. Did you see Archie's last live stream? He probably earned about $1,000 in Super Chats. Within a 30-minute period, it's crazy. So we've gone from 600 to 1,000. Hey, can I hear 2,000? <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, you know, I, I wish Archie the best. I always have. I, you know, I, I sent him money, and he did a, a review of my watches that I had at the time. I had the 18238 date, and I had this watch, and he did a review. I've got a link on my uh, website uh, to that uh, video guys want to see it uh, let's see but the rumor is that this other guy was paid like has a contract for like 300,000 a year okay now, I don't know if that's true but if they're paying him that much money that's some heavy cash coming in okay um, you know that's like Archie getting a thousand dollars every freaking day you know that's it's a lot of money so there's that. Um, there's the model numbers. And uh, yes, I was there, and I think Clive, and I think Clive for, for a bit, annoyed at Archie's constant goading about not getting that Patek. Okay. Um, <clears throat> TGV proved to be as knowledgeable as a beginner and as charismatic, char charismatic as a rodent. <laughs> hey, if they're paying him the money, though, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I don't know how much they're paying him. That was a rumor, right? Uh, does anybody know how, what the value of the contract actually was? Or I, we probably, nobody probably knows. Spending 19 grand on an investment watch while skimping on replacing your worn-out suit may end up costing you more in income earning than you might think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me refresh this. While skimping on... Okay. Let's see here. Quick question. Which YouTube people do you enjoy watching? Um, oh, let me go to my uh, let me go to my subscriptions here and see if I can pull this up. Uh, ch -ch -ch oh, where the heck is it? Um, uh, YouTube. Let me go to subscriptions and see if I can pick out a few here. I think I can do it this way. I go here. Da 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 da. Where's subscriptions? Here we go. Subscriptions. Oh, 
Okay. All right, now I click on subscribe for a lot of people, but um, I'll go through here real quick and say any of these that I actually do watch. I really don't watch PBS NewsHour. I do watch some Tim stuff on Watchbox Studios. I really don't watch much of PC World stuff. I don't watch the Young Turks. Uh, let's see here. Don't really watch the David Pakman show. Don't watch CNBC. A lot of these I subscribe to, but I don't really watch. I watch some of the chart guys. I don't know if I watch money charts. Um, I may watch a few things from Fox News that they put up, but not that often. So I'm just trying to see what other subscriptions here I actually watch. Uh, let's see here. Uh, some stuff from the Daily Wire I'll watch, but not very often. Archie Luxury, I do watch some of his stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what else here. See, the problem is we're just seeing the folks that post often right here uh, because it, that's what it is here. Wrangler Star, he, he puts out some cool stuff. I do watch some of his stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um... Dave Ramsey, I do watch some of his stuff. Not too often, but occasionally I watch some of his stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to see. I'm bl blasting through here just to see if there's any others. Um, I wish there was a way I could sort and show the ones that I actually watch, but I don't think they give me that option. I watch a few things from the Daily Wire. Um... Sound devices, I like their stuff, of course, because they've got some high-quality audio stuff. Um, let's see what else here. Um, there are several Bitcoin-related shows that I watch. Ivan on Tech, he's good right there. I do watch some of his stuff. Tommy Lauren, she's just gorgeous. I'll watch some of her stuff occasionally. I'll watch some of the National, Ge National Geographic stuff occasionally. Let's see here. Oh, boy. There is a light bright. She, they, the couple that does the four-wheeling stuff, uh, they're really cool. But I don't see... I like their production, and she's just drop-dead gorgeous. Let me pull her up here. Light bright, L-I... Uh, T E light bright. Here we go. I I wish she would get better audio though. I mean, my gosh, she's got to get better audio. I'll get safety glasses but as soon as my beautiful. Look at me in the face, stop Kelly. Nope. Um, but anyway, this is the channel here, Light Bright. Definitely subscribe to her. her. Their stuff is really cool. So anyway, I you know, I I couldn't really find some of the stuff. Some of the um, Bitcoin channels that I subscribe to weren't showing up there. Um, there's a guy, Crypto Zombie, Crypto Zombie. He's pretty cool. He puts out a video every day. I, I, I watch some of his videos. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think Clive is getting tired of being on Archie's live stream. Yeah, right. I doubt it. I mean, my gosh, Clive is putting out more content than ever. He said he was going to stop, and then he just, like, a day later, he just, I think he's addicted to uh to all this watch stuff i think a lot of people are uh let's see um i like clive content on his channel he's sensible i don't know anybody that buys that many watches i don't know how sensible you can be uh, clive has battered wife syndrome yes love tim tim's very knowledgeable um okay uh, lots of news i see Federico. Yeah, Federico uh, does some cool videos. Um, it's complicated. Christopher channel is cool. Okay. Yeah, let me know in the chat what uh, what channels are your are your favorites. Oh, this guy Curtis Judd. 
that's on the recommended there on the right, Curtis Judd. He puts out some really good uh, videos on audio and technology and stuff like that. Let's see what else is recommended down here for me. Oh, I like a lot. I watch a lot of Overlander type stuff. Um, and this guy here, I bought a totaled Ferrari at Salvage. Those those videos are kind of interesting. Uh, let's see here. You can see I watch a lot of the off-roading and four-wheel drive things. Because um, I used to do a lot of that. Um, so you can see the videos that they're recommending for me here on the right. Um, so a lot of that, a lot of that kind of stuff. So there you go. All right. Um, let's see. I love Federico's video where he trashed the Nautilus for being a bad value. Oh, can you imagine people spending that money, much money for one of those? And that's an ugly watch on top of that. Craig, what are your criteria for calling it a watch addiction versus just a hobby? <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Well, here's the thing. If you're wealthy, like I think the London watch collector guy, my guess is he's wealthy. I'm just guessing here. I have no idea, but I would guess that he's worth many, many millions of dollars, a deca, deca millionaire, or maybe a billionaire. I don't know. Um, if you've got that kind of money, you can buy as many watches as you want. It's like peanuts. It's like having five or six Ferraris. I mean, it, it, it doesn't affect your world, right? If you're that wealthy, um, then buy what you want. And, and if, it in, if you enjoy having five Patek Philippe's, I mean, you know, then go and do it. I mean, but if you're not that wealthy, if you're just, let's say, a millionaire or maybe worth $2 million or something like that, uh, I think if you own more than one luxury watch, it's a it's a bad move. I, I think you're investing too much. I shouldn't use the term investing, spending too much money on something that is at best holding its value, at worst going down in value. Just listen to some of Dave Ramsey's uh, videos and, and, and you'll see. You, you want to put your money in something that's going up in value. You want to put your money in real estate, stocks, uh, you want to have at least a shot at your money going up in value. Uh, so, yeah, if you're not at least a decamillionaire worth $10 million, I think having more than one or two luxury watches is a, a, a bad move financially. That's all. Um, Fred and his partner, John, are good dudes have done biz with them a few times quality operation at Delray okay I hate the Nautilus actually I think they're ugly well they are ugly yeah um, if you own so many watches that you have to cut corner on other necessities in your life then you have a problem <laughs> yeah I would think so um, I think the Aquanaut has a more pleasant looking case but the Nautilus as a better bracelet. Yeah, I would pass on the Aquanaut too. Uh, you know, back in the day, these these watches with integral bracelets, I mean, they nobody wanted them. I mean, they, they were not the way to go, and they still are not the way to go, folks. Any watch with an integral bracelet, pass. There's no reason to buy it. There are a lot of watches that have the correct type bracelet that you can buy and enjoy and if you ever have to replace the bracelet you can if you want to put a leather strap on it you easily can I mean there's no reason to buy something with an integral bracelet and so so that right there would knock them out of the uh, knock them out of consideration all right I am going to get ready to wrap up anybody have any other questions comments put it in the chat and um, we will uh, we'll get ready to wrap up here. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> Craig, I came late to the chat wondering if you were addressed that article I sent to you on the Geneva seal. 
We actually talked to that about that the other day in one of the um, shows. And Steve is going to talk about that in some more detail on one of his shows. He's doing some more research on it, and he's planning on talking about it. But I, we had a lot of discussion earlier in, in today's broadcast about the quality of Grand Seiko, and clearly the quality of Grand Seiko holds up against a lot of the higher-end Swiss brands. I think there's there's starting to be a consensus on that. So, yes, it's... it's um, I mean, obviously... Uh, you, they can't qualify for that seal because they're not assembled there. They're not. They don't go through all the processes, right? That they have to. But as far as your quality, if you're comparing quality, then yes, it it the the Grand Seiko compares favorably to a lot of the higher end Swiss watches, um, especially the Swiss watches with a lot of hand detailing and so forth in them. Uh, if you really want a Gerald Gento style watch, then get the Vacheron Constantin Overseas three hander and pay a fair market price. Yeah, yeah, I, I just have no interest in um, in his designs. I, I think they're they're ugly. Uh, you know, I, I, it just it's a fad. Everybody, everybody, oh my gosh, Gerald, uh, you know, the, the a watch with an integral bracelet is not the way to go, folks. It's not a good move. So. Um, no, I, there are a lot of uh, much more attractive watches to spend that kind of money on, I think. Uh, good live chat. See you next time. I'll come again. There we go. Eric in the house. Uh, click that bell. Click subscribe and click the little bell so that you'll get a, um, a notification. Uh, TGE Overseas has a hideous be uh, bezel. There you go. And Rolex Hater says, the. There you go. By the way, I put some links in the chat also. And I did put a link in there to, um, to AudreySure.com. Audrey's been talking about possibly doing some more shows. So I put a little link to her to the page we set up for her. We're going to set up something nicer if she starts doing some shows again. So I did put a link in the chat to that. And I put some other links. I put the link to Mark's channel and to Bark and Jack. I put a link to their channels. Well, Bark and Jack's website and Mark's channel. They're all in the, all in the, uh, in the description here. Right. Gold Oyster Quartz is better bet for an integral bracelet. See, I didn't, that's why I didn't like those back in the day either. I didn't like any of the Oyster Quartzes because I didn't like the case design and I didn't like the integral bracelet. So we just went for the regular Date 8. Uh, get yourself a Date 40 instead of the Royal Oak or Nautilus. Absolutely. Date 40, uh, oh my gosh, it's less money. You can buy it in yellow gold. It's stunning. Um, he just got a Grand Seiko. Um, okay. Who? Who just got a Grand Seiko? We're talking about a lot of people are getting Grand Seiko these days. Bark and Jack Eye, absolutely. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. And he said some really favorable things about it. So, um, I'm trying to think what else we can talk about. I think we've kind of talked it all out, folks. Let me know in the chat. Uh, if you have any other questions, and otherwise I'm going to go get something to eat. And I appreciate you folks coming in. Let me just refresh everything, just make sure we, we got everything. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think we're up to date. And again, c click subscribe if you haven't already done it. Click the little bell so that you'll get notifications. And we don't just talk about watches on this channel. We have other shows we talk about other things and and uh other fun videos and i cover some events here and there and i do some videos for some clients some local stuff so we do a lot of stuff on this channel what will you be eating i'm going to rick up a uh definitely a sweet potato i'm going to have some uh, avocado with it and probably some salmon uh what else will i have um, 
Oh, I'll have some tomatoes with it. Um, not sure what else. That might be it. That might do it for t for tonight. Oh, I, I always put some chia seeds on. I sprinkle some chia seeds, not chia seeds, um, hemp seeds. I, I, I sprinkle some hemp seeds on the top. And uh, recommend the Food Ranger YouTube channel. Love that channel. Okay, cool. We got a recommendation, the Food Ranger, folks. Everybody check that out. It's got to be a good one. We're talking about food. All right, I'm going to wrap this puppy up. As usual, we have solved all the world's problems in about uh, an hour and 20 minutes time. We did that. We took care of all of those issues. And some guy says on the other show, he says, second hand's not hitting the markers. Well, that's because of the camera angle, folks. As you see that go around, you'll see it will start hitting the markers right about there. See, it's hitting the markers. And then as it gets on around, it's going to not be on the markers. See right there, it's not on the markers. That's because of the camera angle, folks. So don't trust anything you see that involves a camera. It's not always, what you see is always not, it's not always accurate, folks. Little things like camera angles trickery trickery with the cameras so I'm loading in the app here loading in my video pro and then I will terminate this event and thank you everybody for watching I'm gonna hit complete event